Michelson Found Animals, and we are the other partner in all things LEAF. Excited to have you all with us today. Yes, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. And as people are coming in, uh, please go ahead and sign in, or not sign in, but share your name and where you're from and what you're working on um, in the window, um, in the chat window. And uh, if you have any questions as things are coming up, um, please also ask in the chat. Uh, we're going to be muting everybody um, while the presentation is happening. We're going to do about 30 minutes, um, and then uh, we'll do about 15 to 30 minutes of Q&A. Um, we are being recorded. Um, and you will be muted the entire time, though. If uh, people act nicely, we will unmute you to, to ask questions. Um, so thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm going to launch a poll right now to just find out where people are at. Um, and so go ahead and um, answer the question of what stage you're at. Um, and I apologize if I'm looking over to the right. I have two screens going right now. So um, anyway. We'll dive right into what Leap Ventures is all about. So Leap Ventures is a partnership between Mars Pet Care and Michelson Found Animals, so the two organizations that Amy and I represent. And our goal really is to provide um, a platform for early stage pet care startups in the, in the ecosystem. Um, uh, what we're trying to do is create a better world for pets um, and help startups across the ecosystem uh, get access to what they need. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a partnership between our two organizations. I'm going to have Amy chat for a little bit about what Michelson Found Animals does. Sure. So we are a private operating foundation, which makes us an odd beast in the world. And I like to say that nonprofit is only our tax status. We actually have two social enterprise businesses within the foundation, one which is in software and technology for RFID microchips for pet reunification, and the other which is in the retail space. We run two adoption centers in Los Angeles where we adopt shelter animals, and then we also sell toys and treats and food and do daycare and grooming services, et cetera. So because of that, we have relationships with both shelters and pet owners all over the country. And we're always looking for new products and services that will support them, which is why we are part of LEAP. Uh, we were founded in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, and we have always focused on science and technology and business principles within the foundation, which makes us a little bit different than some of the other organizations out there. In terms of what we bring to LEAP specifically as a nonprofit to get very concrete is within LA, we have depending on the year, around 2,000 dogs and cats that come through our adoption facility. So they are happy to be testers for a variety of products and services, as are our staff and our volunteers. If you've got a retail product that you want to get in front of an audience, we can obviously help with that at our two locations that have different demographics. And we are very plugged into Los Angeles. So if this is a market that you are looking at for any reason, we can help, including for event space. And then nationally, we have several million pet owners in our registry. We communicate with them by email. We're actually adding about 40 to 50,000 people a month, and we have great open rates and click rates on those welcome emails. So that's another way that we help some of the Leap companies get their products out there and do some testing. Same thing with our website and content. And then to the extent that you've got a B2B model on the animal welfare side, we're also very well connected. Um, and we actually, one of our obscure programs is we're trying to develop a non-surgical sterilant for cats and dogs. So uh, we have a deep scientific background and a great scientific advisory board on that side of things that's relevant for anything. Excellent. Thanks, Amy. Um, and uh, a little bit of background uh, of, for Mars Pet Care and, and Kinship. So Mars Pet Care is one of the largest pet care companies in the world. We have 44 uh, brands are in, our, in our portfolio. Um, you've heard of some of them, Pedigree, Iams, Royal Canin, Banfield, BCA. 60% um, uh, of the dogs and cats in the developed world are fed by our products. Um, we have over 70,000 employees in our, in our company in the pet care division. Um, uh, and we serve cats, dogs, horses, fish, and birds. Um, uh, uh, kinship, uh, is the newest division of Mars Pet Care. And our goal really is to uh, find the best and newest ideas that are, are creating a, world, a better world for pets and uh, help them connect to the ecosystem um, and get them tapped into the Mars Pet Care ecosystem. Um, uh, um, so, did somebody ask a question? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so that's a little bit about Mars Pet Care and, uh, and, and Kinship and a little bit about what we're doing together. Um, 
MFA and Mars Pet Care and Kinship is we launched this program, as I mentioned, Lead Venture Programs. Uh, we, we're doing year-round events. We have two kind of major program buckets. Um, we're going to do a deep dive into both of them. Uh, we have Lead Venture Studio, uh, Lead Venture Academy, um, and Lead Venture Studio. I'm not going to describe them right now because we're going to go a little bit deeper um, uh, as we go. So uh, a little bit about the Lead Venture Academy. Um, we all know that uh, everybody on this call, as a uh, presumably as a, a pet care entrepreneur, need uh, need a lot of help, whether it's mentorship or networking or pilot opportunities or access to capital. I think a lot of you probably need access to capital. Um, uh, we all know that you need a lot of help. And so what we've done is tried to create year-round programming like these webinars to connect uh, pet care startup entrepreneurs with the resources that they need. Um, right now, we're really focused on doing um, these webinars, and we have a couple other uh, in-person meetups and classes and events that are in the pipeline. But really the goal is to connect you all, um, have all these events be free and open to the public, um, and really provide a, a way for you to get to the next level. Um, um, and for a lot of people, the next level will be our venture studio. Um, uh, we're planning on doing a bunch of activities over the course of the next year. So we have our venture studio, we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, we're thinking about doing two summits over the course of the next year of uh, bringing people together in the startup world. Um, we're planning on doing a couple boot camps over the year, so really intensive uh, um, um, programs for startups to, over the course of a week, get to, the, to their next level. Uh, we have pitch competitions that we're planning on doing over the course of the next year, three or four of them. The next one that's happening is actually uh, later this month in Su at SuperZoo, the applications for that have already closed and uh, we will be announcing who the finalists are later this week. Um, and then as I mentioned, webinars, office hours, and meetups. You can find all of the latest events at our website, leadventurestudio.com. Um, we are updating the website right now, so uh, if you have trouble finding that, just send me a text or, or, um, or sorry, an email and we'll, uh, I'll connect you. And out of curiosity, I have a quick question. If you are going to be at SuperZoo, if that was already part of your agenda because of your product or service, can you type a message in the chat box and we'll make a point to try and say hi to you while we're there? Yeah, so SuperZoo uh, is happening later this month. It's a lot of product and, and services uh, products in the pet care space. We'll also be at VMX later this year um, and Global later this year and I think a couple others and I'll have to... Uh, look uh, and get back to you on that uh, get back to you on, on what where we're going to be um the next webinar that we have after this actually amy is going to be hosting it amy you want to share a little bit about what it's going to be sure absolutely uh one of the things that you all may or may not know is that if you look at where people acquire pets now dogs and cats the single biggest channel is shelter and rescue. And depending on what survey you look at and what numbers you believe, it's anywhere from a third to maybe as many as half of animals coming into homes come from that channel. And that tends to be the channel with the most volume from any single entity. So if you are looking at customer acquisition or if you are looking at where are the pets, understanding what's going on in the animal welfare market and whether or not those organizations would be good partners for you can be a great way to think about jumpstarting your business, even if pet owners are actually your target customers. So on the 15th, we are going to go through a bit of a landscape and then some um, thought starters for you on if and how you might want to work with animal welfare organizations for lead gen. Great. And then if you happen to be at SuperZoo, as Amy mentioned, come join us for the pitch competition. And then we'll have a, a boot camp that'll be, at this point, invite only um, in Los Angeles uh, in the fall. Um, we have other events that are on our website. Definitely check them out. I want to share the results of the poll that uh, you guys just, just completed, just so we're all kind of on the same page as to who's on the webinar. Um, can you guys see the results? Yep. Awesome. So it looks like... Uh, Quite a, uh, a nice mix of, of different stages of, of people or companies. Um, uh, one repeating revenue, one scaling. A lot of people in the kind of early stage MVP, this is great. This is exactly the type of programming that we want to be. Uh, you're the exact audience of, of people that we want to be attracting. And then in terms of what is your most pressing need? Um, really interesting. Okay, clearly mentorship is, is the biggest need. Um, 
followed by funding. <laughs> I'm surprised funding uh, was second. Um, and oh, but there's two categories of funding. If you added those up, that might be <laughs> yeah, that, is, that is true. Uh, very interesting. Okay, this is very helpful. Um, um, as we're going through this um, as well, if there are ideas that you have on things that we can be doing to help the community, please let us know. Um, we're, we're always interested in hearing new ideas. Um, okay, so now we're going to chat a little bit about our Leap Venture Studio. Um, our Leap Venture Studio is uh, uh, the first ever accelerator program built to springboard innovation in the pet care ecosystem. So it's a 12-week non-residential program based in Los Angeles, and we hold it every year um, in, in the springtime. So it'll be February to May of this year. Uh, companies get up to $200,000 in investment, and it's a partnership between not only MFA um, and Kinship, but also RGA Ventures. RGA Ventures being an arm of uh, RGA, the design firm. Um, uh, they actually run the program for us, or with us, um, and it's held out of their offices in Los Angeles. Um, it's an application process. We select uh, seven to eight companies that come in, um, and it's open to startups from around the world. Um, so as I mentioned, you get up to $200,000 in seed funding, uh, a place to work, um, but really what you're getting in the program is access to the best minds in the pet care space, um, access to people from MFA, Mars Pet Care, and RGA, but then also our extended network. Um, you also get connected to like-minded individ individuals at other pet care companies um, at your stage, um, and you go through this experience together. Um, the program is very personalized. Um, to each of the startups that come into the program. Um, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun, um, uh, um, uh, and uh, certainly it'll, um, uh, for lack of a better word, accelerate you to, to the next level. Uh, we just have a question that came in. Uh, what's the typical equity cut from the program? Um, Amy, how do you wanna answer that? Well, I'll say that we don't have a standard formula, so unlike some accelerators, we don't say it's automatically this much. Um, we do typically uh, look at your last price round, if you had one, or what other investments are going on, and then figure out what makes sense for our investment. And in addition to the equity stake, we uh, do have warrants involved, but it is not a one-size-fits-all model. Certainly. And I'd say that we, we typically take a range of startups um, into, oh, I knew we just asked what stage of companies. Are, uh, yeah, I would say it's, 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 a, it's a range, but most of the companies have product in market with traction and with revenue. Um, and we'll actually talk about that in a little bit more detail in a couple of slides around specifically what we're looking for and what we've learned about who gets the most out of the program. Certainly, yeah. So during the course of the program, again, it's non-residential, but we do require people to be there for the first couple of weeks of the program because there's a lot of uh, just stuff that happens, uh, meetings that take place between the company and MFA, uh, Mars and Kinship um, and RGA. Um, uh, you connect with mentors and advisors as well. And, and we're really working on a company specific plan during the course of the three months. Um, during the second month, you can work remotely, though there are some optional trips that you can take, uh, both in LA and in other places as well. This last cohort, we, a lot of companies wanted to go to the Mars Nutrition headquarters in Nashville, and so we set up a, a couple day trip down there, and four of the six companies decided to come. Um, and uh, and then also Amy's organization. Uh, Amy, you want to talk about the photo shoot that you guys did? Sure. Well, we also teamed up. Um, there was an opportunity, again, optional. There was an opportunity to come work with some of the uh, Mars Global Communication team and also to take advantage of a product photo shoot. So we provided the doggy models, the people models, and the photographer in our retail setting and help people get some photos uh, of their product. And again, not everybody took advantage of it because it wasn't relevant for everyone. Um, and if you are accepted into this, the Venture Studio, we'll get much more specific with you, but plan that four to five weeks out of the 12, you'll need to be on site in LA. And then there are optional trips on top of that. So it, it can be a lot. And, and um, we recommend that, you know, more than one person is involved uh, um, during the course of the accelerator program, um, just because there's just, there's so many things that can be thrown at you. It's, a lot of the program is you get out of it uh, what you put in. Um, one of the best things that we have is actually the services project that is done with each company and um, RGA. So, you know, RGA, this world-class design firm, 
you know, most startups would never be able to kind of afford what they're capable of, of doing. Um, uh, but for each of the startups that come into the accelerator program, uh, you get to have these, the best minds working on a specific uh, um, project uh, over the course of the, the second and a little bit of the third month. Um, and that could be uh, maybe a website redesign that you were thinking, a branding refresh. Um, it could be, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, the process. It could be user journeys. It could be um, a logo exploration. It could be tightening up your messaging. And certainly this is one of the best value adds that a lot of the, the startups have gotten over the course of uh, going into the accelerator program. The third month is really focused on planning for post accelerator program. And for a lot of startups uh, that is fundraising. And so we work with you to develop your pitch deck and your pitch um, and the program really culminates with a demo day um, uh, where companies will pitch to a room full of investors. Uh, we are planning on making it a kind of bigger investor event, um, uh, and that will likely take place in New York this year, though we haven't uh, solidified those plans. Um, and just to be clear, you know, the experience for our, our studio companies does not end after demo day. Uh, we are, you become a part of the family, both with each other and with us, and just as an example, uh, two of the companies from cohort one, which was in uh, 2018, I have worked in the last week. We have marketing projects going on with both of them. I just connected one of them to a speaking opportunity. So we are with you post uh, accelerator. It's just that the intensive 12 weeks is over. Yeah. Yeah, we are, you know, because we take an equity, equity stake in your company, we are on the same side of t the table as you. And so your success is reflective of our success and vice versa. And, and so we do really work with you um, until you don't want to, you get sick of us. <laughs> um, we had six companies in our first cohort um, uh, and a, quite a mix, uh, you know, one, uh, one international, um, a couple uh, nutrition products, a couple diagnostic products, um, uh, quite a mix. Um, and, you know, they definitely had uh, different needs when coming into the program. So a bunch of them, you know, the, um, Pet Play wanted to work on palatability and uh, flavoring. They also did an email campaign with MFA. Animal Biome wanted to do um, uh, a social campaign with MFA and specific um, uh, 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 scientific assistance. Um, uh, and then, you know, we'll share the stack and you can kind of take a look at what all the, all the companies did. But really, you know, at the beginning of the program, we determined together what their needs are. And then it was our job to go off and make those connections and, and, and make sure that everything happened. Um, I would say that, you know, because you're working with Mars Pet Care, a big corporation and, and a nonprofit, there are, you know, things, uh, some things can happen very quickly in a week and other things could take three or six months to happen, um, uh, depending on, on what the ask is. Uh, but, you know, uh, like Amy said, because we continue the relationship afterwards, uh, um, you know, uh, we do our best to make sure that, that you guys hit your goals. Uh, we have a question coming in. Um, 12 weeks is a very short guess. You will only accommodate those startups that can benefit from the help of a 12 week accelerator program. So kind of beyond what, what we, uh, what we're, we're kind of talking about is that yes. So really the intense part is 12 weeks, but we know that everybody has to run a business and they can't be kind of part of a accelerator program indefinitely. And so really what we're hoping is to have focus work over the course of those 12 weeks, but then we'll continue to work with you after the program um, and beyond. For, for years to come. Um, we had six companies in our second cohort. These guys just graduated uh, two months ago from LA. Um, and again, a mix. We had uh, a couple of nutrition companies, uh, one platform play, uh, a CBD company, um, and uh, um, an AI uh, uh, vet company. I'll, I'll send you guys the list. Um, and I'm sure a lot of these companies, you'll, you'll if you travel to any of the shows, uh, um, they attend and would be willing to chat with you about the experience um, uh, in the program. So really the benefits that you have in coming into the program is a long-term relationship with the partners, access to mentors and advisors, um, a relationship with companies in, uh, in the cohort and a huge network, um, specialized classes, and then uh, world-class design projects through RGA.
So what are we looking for? Amy, do you want to maybe take this? Sure. So a little bit of this is based on the stage that you're at, and a little bit of this is based on where we know that we can provide value. Uh, we want you to have an MVP. It would be ideal if you were in the market, although we have had companies that are pre-launch in certain circumstances, because we need you to have a product that we can actually work with you on. Uh, same thing, customer traction is important, knowing that you actually have some product market fit and knowing a bit about who your customer is. We are looking for tech-enabled companies, but that can be at a variety of stages. So we have done everything from pre-seed to seed to series A. So we don't care so much about your funding stage as we do about other things. We have looked at, as you just saw in the previous two slides, things that are in a lot of verticals. And we've also looked at B2B and B2C. And one of the keys that we have discovered is that you need your team to be big enough that one to two members of the team can focus on the accelerator program and give, like we showed in that previous slide, anywhere from 10 to 40 hours a week over the course of the 12 weeks without having that cause your business to collapse. So you need to have enough resources in your company that you can come take advantage of the accelerator programming, really focus on getting the most out of the mentors, out of the MFA and Mars network, as well as working with RGA on the services project and not have too many balls in your ongoing business drop. So if you're a solo founder or there's just a couple of people in the organization, it, it's going to be more challenging for you to get the most out of this program. The other thing that is really important is, of course, we love the passion of entrepreneurs about their product and their market. But in order for us to help you, your assumptions about your product, your market, your customers, your revenues, et cetera, need to be grounded in reality. <laughs> so we can work together. So if you are showing us this hockey stick that has you be at $100 million in revenue next year and you haven't launched yet, mm, that's a little bit of a challenge for us because it's just we have to start on the same footing um, in terms of understanding of, of the market and the potential for your product. In terms of, um, of companies, there's a lot of pet care companies out there. A couple of things that are very important to both Mars and to Michelson Found Animals are that you are going to have an impact for pets and people in some meaningful way. Yes, we want you to run a for-profit business that is wildly successful, but we also need you to make a difference on the issues that we care about. So that's part of the screening process as you come into this. Yeah, I, I, one of the things I would, I would add is also um, the company needs to be scalable. Um, you know, we are looking for companies that have not only impact, but huge impact. And, and so, you know, if you are, you know, uh, uh, um, let's just say a, 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 a toy company with one product, um, you know, and uh, that's not particularly unique and, you know, uh, no plans for a second product or a fourth product or you know whatever it is um it's, it's you're not likely to to get into the program um, um and i'll just emphasize one more point because i didn't touch on it directly and that's around coachability mm. um people who come into this program you have access to all of these resources but you have to know that that means that they're going to pressure test your assumptions they are going to ask you hard questions they are going to give you feedback, some of which will be positive and some of which may be very challenging. And so if you are not up for that kind of an experience, this might not be the right program for you. You're going to have to be willing to really be self-aware and look at what's going on in order to get the most out of the program. Fantastic. Yeah. And I would just add to that, um, having been around the accelerator world quite a bit, it's also if you're coming just for the money and not for anything else, you know, this isn't the right platform for you. You know, we, we really want startups that are engaging with us and with our community over the course of the three months and beyond, and not just coming to us for, for the check. Um, in terms of the, the timeline for the next studio program, um, applications will open up in September. Uh, it's uh, probably a 30 question application. Um, uh, they'll close at the end of October. We'll have the top 25 come and pitch to us. Um, uh, in November, and then we'll decide which companies will come in. We're, we're looking to select between seven and eight startups. Um, and the program will start in February and end in, in May. 
Um, you can access the application on, on our website when it opens up, leapventurestudio.com. If you haven't signed up for a newsletter, sign up for a newsletter. It's a monthly newsletter. We won't spam you, but we'll, we'll let you know when it open, uh, when the applications open up and, uh, um, we'll also, you know, follow us on social. You will, um, you will definitely, uh, uh, know when they are open, uh, for sure. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, all of our pitches will be remote. I apologize when I, when I said come and pitch to us, it'll be, remote pitching for all. Thanks, Amy, for, for clarifying that. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I meant we'll all be together watching your pitches. <laughs> Amy and I are in separate locations. Um, so here are the focus areas. And again, these are not all of them and they are subject, subject to change. But when we polled our greater organizations and the trends that we're seeing in the space, uh, these are the most exciting things that we uh, uh, that, that we see um, in terms of areas for innovation in the picker space. Um, if your company does not, if you if you aren't on this list, is not that does not mean that you should not apply to the program or you shouldn't join uh, academy um, programming it uh, as well. We are always looking for startups that are are doing cool things, and so um, definitely apply and, and let us let us give you that feedback. So the most common errors that we see in the application and, and the entire process, uh, uh, definitely a lack of understanding of the stage that you're at. We see a lot of companies that think they are studio ready, but really they are just not, not at that point. Um, and that could be because they, uh, the product isn't in market or it hasn't gotten uh, enough traction or feedback um, or, uh, or a number of other things. Um, a lack of understanding of your value proposition or significantly overstating it. Um, I've seen a lot of startups that um, uh, think that they are building what the market needs, but haven't validated that in any way, shape or form. Um, a lack of understanding your customer, that goes to the same point. A lack of focus, we see this quite a bit, even for companies that come into the program, you know, especially when you come into the program, you there are going to be tons of doors that open up and you're gonna be, you're going to want to run in a thousand different directions. Um, we really like companies that are focused on one goal or, or not on one goal, but you know, really have a, a focus plan. Um, underestimating the effort and resources required, a failure to identify competition, a lack of a unique uh, customer uh, uh, or competitive advantage, unproven team, a lack of a robust business model and inconsistent facts and logic, and then overly optimistic, Amy mentioned this, financial projections. Um, again, you know, you're, you're, everybody in a startup, there's a lot of stuff that's made up and there's a lot of stuff that you're hoping will come through and we get that. So, you know, th these aren't all hard and fast rules, but we wanna see that you're, you're thinking through your business plan and your model um, and that, uh, um, yeah. So the team, uh, Amy, do you wanna talk about your, your team at all? Sure. You get access to the whole Found Animals team, which includes, if you need it, some IT support, some marketing support, et cetera. But your primary day-to-day -day contacts in the program will be myself and Brett and Phil. I come from the pet background with a decade plus of experience. Brett comes from finance and startups. And Phil comes also from nonprofit, but a lot of venture investing. So between the three of us, you get a good breadth. And then to the extent that it's relevant at whatever point in the program, we pass you on to other parts of our team as well. And our team at this point is almost 90 strong between our retail operations and um, our software as a service business, et cetera. So we're, we're bigger than your typical nonprofit. Great. And then for the kinship team, uh, uh, Ben Jacobs, Melissa Wong, and myself are really your your gatekeepers, and uh, we're your first line of, of contacts for, uh, for connecting into the greater Mars pet care ecosystem, which will be at your disposal. Um, and so the three of us, Ben has, um, uh, he was the co-founder of Whistle um, before it was sold to Mars Pet Care, and now he's leading the, the venture team here. Uh, Winston uh, was a, an exec at Twitter and uh, has, is now doing our in-house uh, venture uh, development. And my background is in accelerator programs and, and startups. Um, and then the RGA studio team, they're just uh, amazing. You can look up uh, these people, uh, but they've been doing um, 
studio programming, uh, accelerator programming for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years. And they've done, you know, dozens of them um, and really top notch people. And, and their job is really to connect you to um, uh, their network um, and help you uh, with your design and, and um, uh, investor issues. And with that, we're going to take some questions. I know, I know people have a bunch of questions to ask, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, type away in the in the comment box, in the chat box, and we'll answer them for you. Amy, when you read an application, this is just me asking you, when you read an application online, what, what's the first thing that you look at and, and what are the first questions that come to mind? The first thing for me is that I have to be excited about the product. Um, something about it, you know, it's novelty, the need that it addresses. I have to go, ooh, you know, that's clever, or I like that, or I know that our pet owners or I, our audience would be interested. And then I want to see a founder or a founding team that have thought through some of the practicalities. You can't think through all of the practicalities if you're a very early stage, but that at least the beginnings of that thinking about how you go from a brilliant idea to a practical plan, that that's reflected. Great. Two questions that came in. Is RGA part of RGA Insurance? I don't, I don't think so. I think that's a separate organization. And then Becky says, it looks like retail CPG was not on the list of types of startups uh, that you're interested in uh, from the slide a few minutes ago. Is there a reason for that? So I'll take a stab at this, which is that, you know, if you look at our cohorts, we have had a fair number of CPG in the sense that we've had toys and treats. So those are CPG products that are sold through retail. Um, if you're thinking about something that is, for example, a toy um, or some other kind of consumable, like a uh, those are a little bit more challenging, as Asad said earlier, like strictly hard goods um, that don't have a recurring revenue stream, that are not tech enabled, et cetera, are, are probably not scalable to the kind of impact we're looking for. But in terms of, there's not any sort of a, a ban on, on CPG or on retail products, and actually two thirds of the last cohort had products that are, are sold through retail. I think there would have to be some some other unique proposition. You know, example would be, you know, what you know, nutrition product that we had in the last cohort was doing upcycled materials um, as part of their ingredient list. I think if you were like a toy company or a product company, you know, we would ha really have to know how you were differentiated from other products in the market. And I think we would need to see more proof of traction or revenue in order to for you to kind of get to the next level of, of joining the program or getting into come and pitch. Hi, Kim. So your question about market research, proven value proposition, et cetera. So recall that we have both the academy and the studio. So the venture studio is for people that are a bit further along and have a lot of their business plan worked out. A lot of the academy programming can help you get to that stage. Um, so for example, I don't know if you attended it, but uh, Ben from the Kinship team recently did a webinar on how to go from an idea to a product and provided a bit of that coaching and a bit of those questions and some of the things that we're doing along the way. So the, the Venture Studio is for folks who have some traction and are at a certain stage. We heard though feedback from the market that people wanted support for earlier stage companies and that's why we launched the Academy programming, which is designed to help a bit earlier. Okay, thanks. Um, we have a question. Are you taking applications from Europe? Will you also re remotely accelerate startups from Europe? How much time do they actually have to spend at your location? So we've had a couple companies, uh, international companies come and to our, uh, to our venture studio program or, or accelerator program. Certainly we, we welcome applications to that. Um, you are, we don't do them fully remote though. The both of the international companies in our previous two cohorts, they were on site for the same on site weeks as the domestic company. So you do need to be willing to come for those four to five weeks of the program. Exactly. Yep, sir. Yep. Sorry, um, Sarah. Yes, we are going to be sharing the recording of the webinar um, as well as the deck. Is that accurate, Asad? Yes, correct. Yep. So you'll have access. Caspian says, How many of the demo day pitches have gone on to Series A? At what kind of valuations? I don't know if we're allowed to release valuations and, and I'll have to get back to you on the numbers. We've had 12 companies go through the program and they've raised collectively 50 million. 
Um, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I can try to research. Yeah, if you're curious, you can Google uh, the names of the companies. They're all still in operation, so that's yay number one. <laughs> Um, and several of them have closed funding rounds since they were participants in LEAD. Some of that is public, some of that is not. And we just graduated, you know, three, uh, six of them just two months ago. So some of them are in the midst of, of fundraising or starting to, to fundraise right now. Uh, how would you define traction? What does a metric look like? Revenue in a specific time period, downloads per month? Yeah, I think that that traction is uh, dependent on the, the type of company, but certainly we're looking at, you know, in the most recent time period, uh, monthly recurring revenue, um, uh, number of users, number of downloads. Um, you know, I think it's really dependent on the company, um, but those are the types of metrics that we're looking at. So and how for often SJ on, um, on exit strategy, uh, we, it's not a requirement that you have an exit strategy, but we do want you to have thought through the future of your business. Um, and, and so, you know, you don't, everybody doesn't have to be looking for a huge venture exit as part of this, but we do want you to have thought through what is your business going to look like in three to five years? What are you aiming at? Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, I can't even remember a talking about an exit strategy in any yeah, of not as part of our um as part of our selection conversations because for most people it's it's too early to tell um i do recall asking one of our cohort two companies early in the process you know were they trying to position for a big acquisition or were they trying to build a multi-generational legacy business so we do ask questions like that because it helps us support you and what you're up to yeah. We do also talk a lot uh, as we're going through applications and as we're going through Venture Academy stuff is, wouldn't it be gr great if, uh, <laughs> I just saw the call, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if these like three companies were working together? Um, and so, you know, it would be awesome if some of the startups, that, some of you guys that are on this chat right now would connect with other people. Because I think that uh, a lot of people are working on very similar ideas or, you know, uh, uh, and together you guys could be a stronger company um, um, as well. So, yeah. Yes, Amy's dog painting. You want to yeah, hang it? on. I'll get you the name of the artist. It's not coming to top of mind, but I'll find it for you. <laughs> Is that your dog? No, the my dogs are on this wall. <laughs> but that is um, an artist. Nice. Did we miss it? Just want to make sure we haven't missed any questions that have come through. You know, I, I would say that uh, the companies that have uh, gotten into the accelerator program, I, I'm, I think 90% of them we've had a relationship with before. They've gone through our pitch competition in the past, or we've, you know, met with them at various conferences, or, you know, one of the partners have had, um, uh, you know, connections with. And so highly recommend you guys take, take if you are serious, you know, get to know us. Uh, um, Join our Venture Academy programming. I'm holding office hours later this month. Um, would love for you to join them. Um, uh, and, you know, Amy has a webinar that's coming up. She also has a female founder webinar that's coming up specifically um, uh, for female founders. Um, so, yes, uh, we'd love to get to know you guys. Our application is entirely based on the questionnaire. Or do you accept text? So, so part of the application is, so, I don't know, there's, you can add a video. Um, you can add a deck. You can add other supporting materials. Um, I would say that, again, like every, people will have, I don't know, maybe a dozen people reviewing the applications. And, you know, everybody looks at an application differently. I know in my past accelerator program, some people immediately go to the deck and download the deck and judge the entire company just on the deck. There are other people that will click on your LinkedIn profile and, and look at your background before determining if they should go any further. Um, and some people will just read all the answers to the questions. So I, I recommend you, you you make sure that you you spend time answering the questions thoughtfully. Um, and you know, if you don't know uh, an answer to the question, it's all right to say that. Um, we understand that you guys are at an early stage. So there's a question about: Are you in a position to introduce startups, potential customers, and partners in the U.S. as well as funding? So yes, as part of the Venture Studio, we do introduce you to potential customers and partners, and. Um, get you pilots going potentially within both the Mars universe, which includes VCA and Banfield, as well as 
um, uh, markets all around the world. And then same thing, we've got you know our, our customers, our, our B2C database, as well as our B2B customers. So we do do that as part of the program. Um, demo day is really for you to tell your story and different companies are at different stages. You know, some of them are really looking to kick off a round and some of them aren't. So again, there's not a one size fits all model for that. How do the invite only events work yet? Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're still trying to figure all that out and full dis you know, we're still full disclosure. We're trying to figure out how to work with, with so many of you, you startups, but the idea is that based on companies that have applied to our pitch competition or that we've met via these academy events, you know, there might be a, a, a you know, sub cohort of veterinary products that we can get together for a day or two um, for, you know, programming, or there could be uh, nutrition products that we could bring together um, or, you know, things like that. And so that's kind of how we're, we're envisioning it. And I think we're, it's a work in progress at this point. So if you have any and ideas, let us know. We'll just throw out that in particular for the boot camp, that's the one that's currently listed as invite only. That is planned for October in Los Angeles. I think we have room for up to 10 teams. If you have not applied for a pitch competition um, or previously applied to the venture studio, and that's something that you are very interested in, please reach out. And aside, can you maybe put to the next slide with resources? Please reach out and make sure that you make your interest clear to us so that we have you on our radar when we think about um, creating a cohort for the boot camp in, in October. Can you tell us a bit more about what you like to see in a video attached to the application? Oh, uh, I, I think uh, probably if if it's an, a, an app, you know, uh, a quick one minute demo of the app, I, I think anything more than a minute people aren't going to launch. Um, the other thing that I've seen six, be successful is just some sort of, you know, if you have a couple of co-founders just, you know, chatting with each other about the, the company and just so we can get a sense of the interplay between two people, you can tell a lot in the video um, uh, about the relationship between two people based on how they interact. Um, so again, don't overthink it. Um, and you may already have a video that you're using for your marketing purposes or that you're using on your website and that would be fine to submit as well. Agreed. Agreed. What other questions? If you haven't joined our Slack channel, uh, Kinship has a Slack channel open to anybody in the pet care um, industry. There are, I think, a couple hundred people on there. Some of the channels are more active than others, and we're trying to, we just launched this maybe a month or two ago, and really just trying to create a, a place for people to connect with other startups. Um, we have a monthly newsletter, as we described, and then also follow us on, on Twitter. Yen says, do you have partners in Europe? You could refer US-based startups who want to set foot in Europe, or is it too early for them to go to other regions? Uh, so Mars Pecker certainly has, you know, uh, fingers throughout Europe. Um, and so when startups uh, um, in the program are interested in, in going to Europe, uh, typically we connect them to our counter, you know, our Mars Pecker associates out there. Um, in terms of other People, uh, I, I know one off the top of my head. Um, Amy, do you have any thoughts on this question? Uh, I don't, uh, because we don't have operations in Europe yet. I mean, we have some researchers in Europe for our non-surgical sterilant product, but I think the short answer is what Asad said is, you know, where it makes sense to connect people um, in Europe, but has to make sense for your business. I would say a lot of the companies that, that apply to the Venture Studio program are specifically interested in the North American market. Not that they don't have interest in, in the rest of the world, but uh, because this market's so so huge, I think that's their primary focus for now. Any other questions before we wrap this up? All right, couple of top tips for you all. Please go sign up for the email newsletter because that is where you are going <clears throat> about things like when we open the next pitch competition um, and that's where you're going to hear about opportunities for meetups, future webinars, etc. So sign up for the email list. That is the best way to stay current. I would also say join the Slack channel because that is an opportunity for you to ask questions and get connected to pet care entrepreneurs who aren't on this call and sometimes your colleague entrepreneurs are even a better resource than we can be. So that's another all the time resources available to you. 
Uh, can startups from India apply to the Accelerator program? Yeah, anybody can apply um, as long as you're able to come to the U.S. and and work here, um, and as long as you know there aren't any visa issues um, during the course of the program. And then when you invest in the company, does the company have to be in the U.S. or can it be a Spanish? Um, it doesn't have to be in the U.S. So it's, it makes things a lot easier if you are a U.S.-based company that we invest in. Um, and if you are looking for further investment um, out of uh, North American investors, it, it probably makes sense for you to incorporate here. Um, uh, but we have invested in, in, um, uh, in companies outside the U S it just takes a little bit longer to, to get everything done. Um, how do you collaborate on startups with Royal Canin? Yes. Yeah, certainly. That's one of the, um, best resources that we have. We've had a number of startups, uh, um, connect with or partner with Royal Canin on, uh, various projects. Um, uh, um, yes, yeah, certainly. And they actually sent uh, a number of their innovation team uh, to the venture studio during the first week so that they specifically can meet um, all the startups and see if there are any projects that they can work on. How many applicants have you had for the accelerator program? I actually don't know. I what, honestly don't even know the answer to that. We've looked at, you know, collectively, we've probably seen, I think the number that we've tossed around, at least at Mars, is like close to a thousand startups over the, the last like year and a half, but not all of those are, you know, accelerator um, startups. So I, I would guess that we will likely see, I don't know, between 100 and 200, uh, you know, qualified. To give you the recent data point, we had 50 people, 50 organizations apply for the pitch competition. All right. Hopefully this means we've gotten to everyone's questions. What kind of company structure do you consider for the U.S.? I think most of them are C-Cores. We, we, it's really hard to invest in an LLC. Um, so C-Core um, is, is definitely the, the best type of structure if, you, if you're looking for investment. Oh, thanks, Becky. I will go make sure that that is working now. Have you had a look at the Business Angel Network in the U.S. for startup sourcing? Those too early for them. I have not. If you want to, is uh, Business Angel a specific network? Because because we do talk to the, for example, the angel networks that are based out of Southern California for our companies when they're here, if that's relevant. Um, but I don't know that specific group. If that's a specific group. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'll. I'll have to look that up. Okay, thanks, Jan. We'll we'll look it up. If the startup solves more local problems than global, can the startup still qual qualify? Uh, yeah, I think I think it depends on the scalability of of what the problem that you're solving. Uh, you know, certainly if you're solving it on a local level, is it applicable to other localities um, and can it scale and, and, and whatnot? So, well, and uh, also if you mean local as in India, that's an enormous market. So that might be a meaningful business, even if it was only relevant in India. So. Yes. So Nora, um, on the, on the website um, and Asad can also, uh, we can send out the link that yeah. it, once it's fixed. The, the female founders webinar. If you if you uh, go to leadventurestudio.com, you'll be able to find all the, the most recent activities. And I'll make sure in the next 15 minutes that the registration is working again. If it's not, Becky, could you just email me and let me know the issue that you're having? Okay, all. Well, um, I think we're towards the end there. If you have any more questions, certainly hit us up in the Slack channel, email us, um, and uh, we'll go from there. Amy, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us, guys. We look forward to keeping in touch. And uh, we'll send out a short survey after this. If you could fill it out, it'll take literally take you a minute and a half, um, but it will be hugely helpful as we continue uh, making program. So thank you all.
Hey, Azad, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> should I introduce myself? Uh, oh, sorry. Well, one second. I'm going to just. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop recording.